Alrighty, welcome to another video. I am Dr. Leo Venus, and on this channel we talk about health, nutrition, lifestyle, and pretty much anything we feel like talking about. If you are new to this channel, be sure to click the subscribe button and the notification bell next to it so that you are notified every time I make a new video. Today we are talking about the whole idea of omega-3s in cancer. I first heard about this quite a few months ago. I thought maybe it will blow over, but still to this day I still receive messages, DMs on Instagram, emails of people asking, what should I do when it comes to omega-3 should i be worried about dha supplementation and the risk of prostate cancer now there's a little bit of drama going back and forth here with the whole dha supplementation and the people who are trying to expose this as a scam i'm not really interested in that the main warrior the main vibe that i'm getting from this whole dha cancer scam type of drama that's going on is that some people are worried that because certain doctors who are defending the use of DHA or supplementing long chain omega-3 fatty acids do actually sell some of these supplements. They may have a conflict of interest. It may therefore be something like, do not dare to touch my supplement profits. I am actually not sponsored by anyone. I am not selling supplements to anyone. I do not get salaries from any companies. I am not interested in whose opinion is what. I just want to see the best balance of evidence today. So let's get right into it. I searched DHA, cancer, prostate cancer specifically, and I went through a lot of studies. Now, not all studies are equal, right? Some studies should be weighted differently based on the design, based on the type of study we're talking about. So we're going to break this down exactly what kind of studies I found for each type for the link of cancer and DHA and against the link of cancer and DHA. Let's put up the hierarchy of evidence here and start with the studies that go against the link of DHA and prostate cancer. So to begin with, we had nine studies that fit the category of in vitro or animal experiments that did suggest that prostate cancer and DHA were not linked. Now these nine studies are obviously very far down the hierarchy of evidence, so we're not really going to put a lot of weight on them. Going up, we then also had one cross-sectional study suggesting no link. A little bit higher up, we had four case control studies that are suggesting that there was no link. Then we had two prospective cord studies. Now these are also not perfect. They're still observational studies, but if designed correctly and if powered enough, they can actually give us some good information. Then we had one interventional trial suggesting no link. We had four reviews, which were not systematic reviews, but just reviews of the available evidence at the time. And then at the very top, we then had five meta-analyses or systematic reviews against the link of DHA causing cancer. Also, another thing I want to keep in mind is that the hierarchy of evidence puts meta-analyses and systematic reviews at the very top. However, in this case, randomized controlled trials would actually be higher up on the hierarchy of evidence because these systematic reviews and meta-analyses are putting together observational studies, which is definitely still quite powerful, but a randomized controlled trial in that case would actually be a more powerful type of study. Systematic reviews and meta-analyses would be much more powerful than a randomized double-blinded placebo controlled trial when it would be of randomized controlled trials. However, we do not have that data and that is why we're still dealing with relatively weak evidence when it comes to the DHA link to cancer. Now then on the other side, the studies that are suggesting that there might actually be a link between prostate cancer and DHA. Let's take a look. So we got one exploratory case study. We have two cohort studies, two prospective cohort studies suggesting that there is a link with one of them being this SELECT study, which is probably the main study that has been causing the most amount of controversy around this whole topic. Quick thing that I want to say that when I was going through the medical literature and I was looking through the studies, I actually found a huge amount of just response after response of people, of researchers, of scientists who were reacting very, very negative to this select trial and pointing out some of the flaws in the study design, like how the DHA levels were relatively low, how they're only testing them twice, how they were doing a phospholipid panel rather than the more accepted kind of gold standard tests like omega-3 index that might be a little bit more accurate, as well as the fact that they found that omega-6s were beneficial and that trans fatty acids weren't actually associated with anything. And usually when you have a huge amount amount of scientists or researchers criticizing a piece of work like this, it means that there's probably something wrong with it. Now, it doesn't mean that it is necessarily the case, but as a general rule in the scientific community, whenever you see one piece of work come out and they, a lot of researchers, the majority going against it, more often than not, it's because there's something wrong with that study. And that is what we're seeing here. And that is why I think 
we shouldn't necessarily be putting too much faith into this one study. So going up the hierarchy of evidence, then we also had three systematic reviews or meta-analyses that did actually show some sort of a link between prostate cancer and DHA intake. A thing to keep in mind here is that a lot of them are actually industry funded, supported by the global organization for EPA and DHA omega-3s. Obviously industry funded studies, we need to be a little bit skeptical of. However, not all of these studies, especially some of the higher up studies, the meta-analyses and systematic reviews that were against the link between DHA and prostate cancer were actually not funded by industry. So it's not like all of these studies were funded by industry. Now in terms of on the pro link to cancer side, there are definitely a few issues as well. Some of these studies have a lot of potential biases that can be introduced. People who get screened more often will actually find prostate cancer more often. And prostate cancer is one of those diseases that for the most part, for a large, large portion of people, it's just something that would be there and would do nothing to the person who has it until their dying day, they would actually never have a problem with that prostate cancer because it's such an indolent, slow growing disease. Whereas if you actually check for it and if you're doing the PSA screening, which is also a very controversial topic in the medical field, uh, they, they end up finding it and then having to go through a lot of treatment, a lot of stress, which a lot of times is completely unnecessary. The complexity as well of omega-3 metabolism is such that going from observational studies, finding a little bit of a link and then jumping to the conclusion that DHA causes cancer of the prostate is a huge, huge leap. Uh, in logical thinking, and I, I do not think there is enough data. The, the researchers that did some of the meta-analyses that found the link even say so themselves if you read, quote, these results must be interpreted with caution since the etiology of prostate cancer is multifactorial and the metabolism of long-chain omega-3 fatty acids in the human body is complex. So there you have it. That is what the available evidence suggests today. We have on the pro-cancer side, we have six studies on the against the link between prostate cancer and DHA. We have 26 studies. So there is definitely, as of today, like I said, there are no randomized controlled trials. It's based mostly on observational studies. However, given the balance of evidence, given all the things that we discussed in this video today, I definitely do think that the balance of evidence, the weight of the evidence is leaning more towards the side of DHA not being a causal factor when it comes to prostate cancer. That being said, these studies suggesting that there may be a possible link are not completely, you can't just dismiss them either. There it might be something very interesting to look at there. And I do hope we do get more research to look and see if there actually is any real link. There are certain vitamins and certain supplements in the past, such as beta carotene, which is very important in its natural form from foods. However, supplementing it can actually increase your risk of cancer. And there are examples of other vitamins and other pills that do the same. And that is why I recommend for the most part, avoid supplements when it comes to multivitamins, all these things, there's no point. You can get all of these things from foods. There are only very, very few supplements I recommend. And DHA omega-3 is not completely necessary either if you're getting it from food. However, like I said, as of right now, the risk that DHA, according to the best evidence available, the risk that DHA causes prostate cancer is very small. It's not impossible, but it's still very unlikely. Okay, so that is pretty much it. I finally got to this video. It's been a long time coming. A lot of people have been asking for it. We finally got through this fishy business. I also want to quickly take the opportunity to thank my patrons. I recently put up a Patreon account and already has a few patrons on there that are helping to support my work and I'm so grateful. Thank you so much. This is really going to help me continue to put the work that I do on YouTube, which is obviously for free for everyone. So if you do want to support me as well and also enjoy some of the perks and bonuses that are only going to be available to my patrons, then there is a link to my Patreon in the description box. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comment section what you think. Have you been worrying about this whole DHA cancer link? Have you been stressing about this? Let me know your thoughts. And like always, stay evidence-based everyone, stay healthy, and I'll see you in the next video.